So let's get more on this one from Tim Grosser, who's New Zealand's trade minister. He's uh, on morning call today. Nice to have you with us in our Hong Kong studios, Tim. Thank you, Susan. Uh, let's talk about this a new deal. It's interesting because you say it's more strategic yeah. rather than specific. What does that mean? I think it's been clear for 15 years that the name of the game in terms of Asian Pacific integration is via these FTAs. Now, Hong Kong stood apart from that for reasons of principle, and I have to say, if the whole of the world had kept to that position of principle, namely, we only liberalised through the multilateral process through the WTO, and we'd all be better off. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we passed that point. This puts FTAs into Hong Kong's hands. FTAs are now part of the process by which Hong Kong itself moves forward. So strategically for Hong Kong, very important. Yeah, but uh, let's be honest here. I mean, Hong Kong isn't really known for its high tariffs and its high taxes. No, exactly. But they've stood apart from this process, and New Zealand's taken a different position up to now. Uh, we, we're sort of really at the centre of uh, most of the action on FTAs occurring in the Asia Pacific. Uh, we've not done this primarily for strategic reasons, mm -hmm. uh, for commercial, but for strategic reasons. Mm -hmm. For New Zealand, it's um, slightly different. We're the only co developed country in the world to have a comprehensive FTA with China. Yeah. Uh, we're now the only country in the world to have both that plus a deal with Hong Kong. And for our exporters of high quality goods and services, this puts them in a great position. Often they'll use Hong Kong as a launching pad into the rest of southern China. Okay, well, let's talk about China because yeah, you're right. You do have a, an FTA yep. with China, which is pretty rare these days. Um, let's talk about what happened, though, yesterday. I mean, the big news headlines, of course, uh, is the sentencing of those four Rio Tinto employees. As a trade minister for a country right next to Australia, you know, what did you think of this verdict and this trial, really, for uh, businesses trying to, uh, to make money on the mainland? <laughs> I'm going to comment and avoid commenting on something as high profile and has nothing to do with New Zealand. We all know that this issue of dealing in the proper way with all the authorities is something of central importance. But doesn't but, this have anything to do with, say, a foreign company trying to do business in China? Aren't there lessons to be taken away there? I think there will be some very important lessons and we'll need to Australia? sift through those experiences and companies will need to make their decisions. But right now, I think uh, it's a quite a, people are sh reeling from the shock and we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Mm. Okay, so let me just ask you this. Then mm. we'll take it from a different perspective, if you, if you don't mind, sure. uh, Trade Minister. But let's say it was a New Zealand national involved here. How would New Zealand have reacted? Oh, well, we would expect New Zealand to, any New Zealand operating in any country, to observe the rules and the laws of the country concerned. And um, uh, that would be the primary issue for us. Mm. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about China then, this mm. FTA, because it's, uh, has it actually helped your economy at all? Oh, hugely. Mm -hmm. um, our exports to China increased by nearly 40% in the last 12 months uh, in a time when world trade is declining by 13% in volume terms. Uh, we had this iconic statistic come out yesterday, uh, yet, no, day before yesterday, where China's displaced the United States as New Zealand's second largest export market. So for us, our future will be determined in very large part by the further development of our trading relationship with the greater China area. Mm -hmm. You know, this is hugely significant to New Zealand. Okay, well, you know, you, you mentioned the U.S., mm -hmm. so I have to bring up the U.S., uh, obviously the U.S. lawmakers and, and their displeasure mm -hmm. with the uh, state and rate of the yuan, the Chinese currency at this point. What do you think about this argument? Do you think a pegged yuan hurts trade between, say, you and China, your country and China? No, for us, it's not really an issue. Pe what choice people make of their currency regime is not part of the trade deal. Uh, I obviously understand how sensitive this to U.S. lawmakers as the surpluses get built up and up, but fundamentally, we regard that as a non-trade issue. Mm -hmm. Um, you understand how sensitive this is no, to U.S. lawmakers? of course I understand that, yes. Uh, why mm. is it more sensitive well, for it's, U.S. It's, lawmakers? It is very sensitive to, to all countries running trade deficits with China. Um, from the point of view of New Zealand, we're also running a trade deficit, but actually we take a different position to most countries on this. We regard that as a sovereign matter for the country concerned. Mm -hmm. Now, would you like to see the Chinese currency appreciate this year? Well, I think it would probably help our exports, so if that's what happens, we won't be displeased. Mm -hmm. But you would like to see that happen? Well, if it happens, we wouldn't be displeased. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about India then, because uh, I think uh, New Zealand is, tr is also trying to sign up uh, an FTA agreement sure. with India. In fact, I think uh, New Zealand probably has some high hopes for India. Looking at statistics, it looks like uh, India may actually catch up with China uh, just uh, in, in the next few years or so. Well, in terms of our trade, trade, relationships, trade relationships, I guess right. that's possible. But from our point of view, what we see is the second super economy in the developing world emerging. Uh, if at current rates, if the Indian economy continues to expand in 15 years, it'll be the size of the Chinese economy today. Of course, China will have moved on, one assumes. But 
whatever the future may be, we know that India is going to play a huge role in the Asia Pacific. We want to have the best possible relationship with India, and that's what we're set about to do. Mm -hmm. Can I ask how the uh, progress of these talks are? You, are you set to uh, sign an FTA pretty uh, soon? Oh, no, no, no. We've just commenced them. This will be two years down the track. This takes a long time. The Hong Kong deal itself took many years to actually put together. You, the uh, Trade policy is not something for those who are into instant gratification, Susan. Okay, well, <laughs> trade policy is not about instant gratification. No. Uh, okay, Minister Grosser, let me just talk to you about some new developments here in Hong Kong this morning. We have uh, more talk on uh, taxes, of course, uh, being made more transparent because Hong Kong has been seen as a tax haven by yeah. other uh, government authorities. Uh, how do you view Hong Kong in that regard? Well, let me give you a specific issue, which is the abolition of excise tax on wine. Now. I think this has been an astonishing success for Hong Kong. I understand imports since the abolition of excise tax have gone up 80 per cent, and that Hong Kong may even already have passed London, which has been the world's largest entrepot port, for wine. Now, what has this done? Well, it spurs a whole lot of things around Hong Kong's trading partners, including New Zealand. New Zealand is a very successful wine exporter. Our exports of wine to Hong Kong have increased, I think, about 40 per cent in the last 12 months. And so this initiative, in terms of abolishing the excise tax, has actually spurred a whole lot of mutually beneficial activity. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I think this more has to deal with income taxes, though, and income tax evasion, unfortunately, with the, these governments. But well, that's know. outside my brief. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, let me just uh, ask you one more question then, because uh, you know New Zealand has been seeing an increase in its exports. Uh, your biggest exports, of course, are, are wool, more agricultural, milk, et cetera, yep. et cetera. Uh, you know, looking forward for 2010. I mean, what's the uh, what's the gains looking like? Well, we're seeing. I mean, we, we are coming out of a, a recession ourselves. We've had three quarters of positive growth. The figures that came out for the uh, last quarter a few days ago were 0.8 percent. Uh, so actually, we're looking reasonably healthy. We and the Australians have come out fairly lightly from this regime. So we're looking for substantial growth in the future. Okay. Well, Tim Grosser, thank you so much uh, for dropping by today. Lovely to okay. see you. And I know you took a, a really long flight from Bogota just to get here. So <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, Tim Grosser, New Zealand's uh, trade minister. So